Cool, what's up guys? Justin here with the CGEssentials.com. So a popular finish right now for the exterior of buildings, and I guess it has been for a long time, is like a board and batten siding, which is basically a siding that's got all these vertical ribs on it. I wanted to talk through a quick way to apply that to a more complex surface, like a house with a sloped roof in Blender. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, and so what I really wanted to do was just talk about how we might use this in order to quickly create a building that actually has that 3D board and batten on here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna model out one of my sides. So I'm just gonna come in here and I'm gonna to toggle snapping on. So I'm gonna to go to vertex snapping right here. I'm just gonna do a shift A and I'm gonna add a plane. I'm gonna rotate that 90 degrees like this. And I'm just gonna take that plane and I'm just going to snap it to that corner right here. And then we'll do the same thing on the other side. So I'll just tap into edit mode, select this. Sometimes it's easier to jump into wireframe mode in order to do this, but I'm just gonna do a G and then a Y in order to move that to this side. And so I'm gonna go ahead and I wanna take this down a little bit. So to whatever the height of my building's gonna be, I'm just gonna go with something like this for right now. And then I'm just gonna do a control R to add a loop cut and I'm gonna select this and move it up. So that's gonna give me kind of the general shape of my building right here, right? So now if we jump back into material preview mode, we've just got a face right here. This is probably a little bit too tall for the footprint of the building, but we're gonna use it for right now. All right, so now what I wanna do is I wanna model out my batten pieces. So I'm gonna make sure that I have snapping turned on. And then for my vertex, I'm just gonna come in here and do a shift right click and select this location right here. But then what I can do is I can do a shift A and I'm just gonna add a plane. You could also use a cube. And I'm gonna set this to whatever the width I think my batten pieces are gonna be. In this case, I'm gonna say 1.75 inches and hit the enter key. But now I can jump into top down mode and I kind of find it helpful to jump into wireframe mode. So just hold Z and then uh, go into this wireframe mode. But now I'm gonna tab into object mode. I'm just gonna move this over on the X axis like this. Then I'm gonna take the whole thing and I'm just gonna move it up so that it's just inside of this corner. I don't want it on the exact end of the corner because uh, the operation we're gonna do can get a little bit weird. But now what I wanna do is I wanna take this whole thing and I wanna extrude it up. So I wanna do an E and I wanna extrude it up above the top of my roof right here. So now what that's going to allow me to do is that's going to allow me to add a modifier to this. So we're going to say um, it's going to be an array modifier and I can use the array modifier to uh, make copies of this. So in this situation, for example, I'm going to set my array modifier to, we're going to call it 12 inches right here. So I'm just going to type in 12 inches. That's going to be my offset. And then I can turn my count up like this. And you may need to do a little bit of adjustment to get this to align in the middle, um, because really the middle is kind of what you want to pay attention to, right? So I can just do a G, Y, and move this over. And I just want to make sure that I don't have anything that's exactly intersecting this edge over here, which I don't. So we should be good to go. So now we've got our batten pieces in here. Well, now we need to use this end piece um, to cut our batten pieces, right? And the way that we can do that is we're just gonna take this plane right here and we're gonna add a solidify modifier to it. What the solidify modifier is going to do is it's gonna give this thickness. So if I click and drag this, right, it's going to allow me to make this wall thicker. Well, what I want is I want this wall to be a solid that intersects with this geometry. So now I can adjust the offset in here a little bit like this. And I just want to make sure that for all the objects inside of this footprint, there's an intersection. And so now what I want to do is I want to jump into my batten pieces and I want to add a Boolean modifier. And for a Boolean modifier, what I can do is I can select this object right here and I can use it to cut my objects. But this isn't doing exactly what we want, right? Because what we want is we want this to um, only have these objects in here where this intersects. And so to do that, we just wanna click on the intersect option right here. And when I do that, notice what that's doing is that's coming in here and that's basically cutting these objects so that they only align with this piece right here. So now what I wanna do though, is I wanna take this object and I wanna make it so it's just a wireframe. So I'm gonna go into my object properties, do a display as wire right here, whoops. And I wanna make sure that I have the or the cutting plane in here selected as wire. 
I don't want my battens to be in here as wire. So now what I've got is I've got these batten pieces that are running along this surface right here. But we have a little bit of a problem because we still don't have a wall in here. And so for our wall, all I want to do is I just want to duplicate this. So I'm just going to do a shift D. I'm going to go ahead and name this wall. Um, so I'm just going to click on this, type F2 and type in wall. And honestly, it's probably better to label all of these. So these are going to be our battens. Or in this case, because I want them together, I'll do wall underscore battens. And then for this one, I'll do wall underscore batten cutter. And we can go ahead and call this one floor. But what I want to do with my wall is I want to get rid of the modifier that's in here so that it's a flat plane. And I want to make sure that I set this one as actually display as textured like this. So now I have a wall object in here as well as a cutter object in here that we're able to use in order to generate this wall. And so let's say we also wanted to cut a window in this wall. Well, what we could do is we could just come in here and do a shift. Oops, we could do a shift right click. I'm just going to do a shift A and add a cube and I'm going to use this cube as a window. So I'm going to scale it up a little bit, um, do an SZ to scale it on the Z axis. And let's say we wanted this centered on this wall. So I'm going to scale this out just a little more. But now what I can do is I can use this as a Boolean cutter as well. And in this case, we need to make sure that it's cutting both our wall. So we're going to add a Boolean to our wall and we're going to select this object. And we also want to add another Boolean to our battens. So I'm just going to add a Boolean right here, select this cube. And then I also want to set this cube to wire like this. So now notice what that's going to do is even if we move it around, it's going to cut out both the battens as well as the actual wall itself. And so now what we can do is we can take each one of these and we can apply an array modifier in order to copy them. So in this case, for example, I want this wall to be copied over here. So I'm just going to use the array modifier to do that. And in this case, we don't want this to be on the X. We want it to be on the Y. And we also probably want to do a constant offset because that's going to allow us to do an offset based on a distance. So and before you do this, you want to make sure that you've come in here and you've applied all of your rotations and scales in here, um, just so your uh, distances don't get all messed up. But now I want to set my distance on this one. And so I want to set this to a distance of negative 30. And then I want to do the same thing with my battens, right? So I want to add another array modifier. And notice how this is adding it at the bottom of the stack. So because it's adding it at the bottom of the stack, it's applying all these other operations before this one. But for this one, I'm going to set this to a constant offset. And again, it's going to be something very close to negative 30. In this case, it's probably going to be just a bit longer because we want this to be outside of this wall. So we'll just click and drag this a little bit. But now, notice how if we were to make a change in here, so if we were to adjust this, because this is an arrayed wall, right? Any changes I make on one side will be applied on the other as well. So now we've got this building that's all being controlled by what we have over here. And then from here, it gets pretty easy, right? So because all you're really going to do at this point is let's say you wanted to add these sidewalls right here. So you just do a shift right click. I'm just going to add, we'll call it a plane and we'll rotate it 90 degrees. And then I'm just going to move it so that it aligns with this corner. But then you can just take this and you can just move it so that it aligns over here. And then you can just take this top edge, move it up like this. And then we can just apply or add some battens to this wall as well. So we do the same thing where we add a plane, align it to our wall, and then move it up. And then we can just use the array modifier again in order to set this. So again, we're going to go with a constant offset. I probably should have gone with a constant offset on the other side, but that's okay for what we're doing right now. We're going to do 12 inches and adjust this over like this using the array function. And so one thing that's cool about this is you actually can come in here and adjust it. 
So like for example, I put this in with a relative offset. Well, I can just come in here and adjust it with a constant offset instead on this wall. Then I can just add a count right here. So again, making that adjustment is really easy once you have this all set up using modifiers in Blender. And then again, you could add another array modifier and add your battens over here as well. So then if we jump back into solid mode or even in rendered mode, you can see how these battens are really giving us a nice surface on our walls inside of Blender. All right, so leave a comment below. Let me know if workflow tutorials like this are helpful to you. I just love having that conversation with you guys. I will link to some other Blender architectural modeling tutorials on this page as well, but leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.